afternoon. Welcome to Deadly Days, Tales of Dark Fantasy, episode number 12. If you're wondering what happened to episode number 11, I did it, and it was too long to post on the regular podcast channel. It was over an hour and a half long. It was called Typhoid Mary. It is, however, available on the podcast area on the YouTube videos. So it is available, but you have to go to YouTube and just look up Deadly Days, Tales of Dark Fantasy. You should see it there on my other channel on YouTube. So I've got to do two of them. So you get episode 11 and you get episode 12 today. Uh, However, we're going to do a short one today. Uh, This is going to be probably, perhaps, one of the shortest uh, short stories by Hans Heinz Avers, or Ewers, called Fairyland. Now, before we get to it, I translate these stories. I translate stories from different sources, uh, but... Generally speaking, I really favor stories by Hans Heinz Ewers or Avers, Karl Hans Strobel, uh, Stanislaw Przybyszewski, which we haven't yet heard yet, and stories from Der Orchidean Garden, which is the world's first illustrated fantasy magazine that came out in 1919 and put out, I think it's 53 issues, of which I am translating and publishing those with the original art in English for the first time ever. So those are also available. Uh, And I'm taking stories from Cocaine Magazine, which is another illustrated magazine that I translated for Side Real Press of England. So I've got plenty of stories out there Uh, and a lot of these are stories that if you like this kind of stories uh, buy one of the books they're they're gonna be great Uh, to find them you they my books are on lulu.com which is l-u-l-u dot com you can go there and just do a catalog search Uh, For my name, Joe Bandel, band like a rock and roll band, E-L. Or you can go directly to my spotlight page, which is www.lulu.com slash spotlight slash anarchist banjo. Anarchist banjo is one of the uh, names I go by on the internet. So anyway, that pretty much covers the introductory stuff. Let's get to Fairyland. As the Haypag steamer, Haypag is a a company, Hophag, Hophag, Haypag, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Hophag steamer lay in the harbor at Port au Prince, little blue ribbon rushed into the breakfast hall. She ran all the way around the table breathlessly. Isn't Mama here yet? No, Mama was still in her cabin, but the officers and the passengers all jumped up to take little blue ribbon onto their laps. Never had a lady on board the president been so celebrated as this laughing six-year-old If Little Blue Ribbon drank out of their teacup, they were happy the entire day. She always wore a little white chambric dress, and a little blue ribbon kissed her blonde locks. They asked her a hundred times a day, Why are you called Little Blue Ribbon? Then she would laugh, So they can find me again if I get lost. But she never got lost. Even when she was running around in a strange port alone, she was a Texas child and clever as a hound. 
Today, no one at the table could catch her. She ran over the top of the table and climbed into the captain's lap. The strong Norseman smiled at that. Little Blue Ribbon always liked him, and that was the one thing he was proud of. Dunk, said Little Blue Ribbon, and dunked her biscuit into his teacup. Where were you so early again today, asked the captain. Oh, said the child, and her blue eyes glowed brighter than the ribbon in her hair. Mama must come with. We all must come with. We are in fairyland. In fairyland? Haiti? doubted the captain. Little Blue Ribbon laughed. I have absolutely no idea what this land here is called, but it is fairyland. I have seen it myself. The wonderful monsters sitting all together on the bridge to the marketplace. One has big hands like a cow, and the one next to him has a head like two cows, and one has a scaly skin like a crocodile. Well, they are much more beautiful and wonderful than the ones in my book of fairy tales. Will you come with, Captain? Then she sprang up and ran to the beautiful woman that was just entering the hall. Mama, quick, drink your tea, quick, quick. We must come with, Mama. We are in fairyland. Everyone went with, even the first engineer. He had no time to spare at all and hadn't even appeared for breakfast. Something was not right with his engine and he needed to fix it while they lay in port. But Little Blue Ribbon liked him because he carved pretty turtle shells for her. That was why he had to go with. Then Little Blue Ribbon led the company off board. I will leave and work through the entire night, he said to the captain. Little Blue Ribbon heard and nodded earnestly. Yes, do that. I will be sleeping then. Little Blue Ribbon led as they hurried through the dirty streets of the harbor. Everywhere, curious black faces poked out of windows and doors. They jumped over the broad gutter, and Little Blue Ribbon laughed delightedly as the doctor stumbled and sprayed dirty water all over his white suit. They walked on between the miserable stalls of the market, through the ear-shattering noises of shrieking Negro women. See, see, there they are. Oh, the sweet monsters. Little Blue Ribbon tore herself loose from her mother's hand and rushed up over the little stone bridge that led over a dried up creek. Come, everyone, come quick. See the marvelous creatures, the splendid monsters. She clapped her hands enthusiastically and leapt with quick strides through the hot dust. There lay the beggars, showing off their horrible diseases. The Negroes went carelessly past, but no stranger could go past them without reaching deeply into their pockets. The beggars knew that very well and took advantage of it. Those that drew back at the fearful sight would give a quarter, and the lady that became sick would give at least a dollar. Oh, just look, Mama, that one there with the scaly skin, isn't he beautiful? She pointed out a negro whose entire body was pitted and disfigured with a grisly moss. He looked greenish-yellow, and his hardened scabs really hung like three-cornered scales over his skin. And that one there, Captain, look, that one there. Oh, how funny he looks. He has a buffalo head, and his fur cap has grown stuck on him. Little Blue Ribbon tapped with her parasol on the giant black head. He suffered from horrible elephantitis, and his head was had swollen up like a giant pumpkin. His hair was tangled and hung down like thick, long rags on all sides. The captain tried to pull the little one back, but she tugged him along, quivering in excitement, going from one to another. Oh, dear captain, have you ever seen such hands? Tell me, aren't they marvelous, wonderful? Little Blue Ribbon beamed with enthusiasm and bent down deeply to a beggar whose hands were both swollen from elephantitis. Mama, Mama, look! His finger is much thicker and longer than my entire arm. 
Oh, Mama, if only I could have such hands. And she laid her little hands in the broad, outstretched hand of the Negro. Like a tiny white mouse, it trembled on the immense brown surface. The beautiful woman screamed loudly and fell into a deep faint into the arms of the engineer. Everyone occupied themselves with her. The doctor filled his handkerchief with eau de cologne and laid it on her forehead. But little Blue Ribbon searched in her mother's purse, took out a little bottle of smelling salts, and held it right under her nose. She knelt on the ground and large tears dropped out of her blue eyes and moistened her mother's face. Mama, dear sweet Mama, please wake up again. Please, please, Mama. Oh, wake up quick, dear Mama. There are still so many marvelous creatures I want to show you. No, you can't sleep now, Mama. We are in fairyland. And that's the end of that story, perhaps the shortest story that I know of, uh, by Hans Heinz Ewers. Uh, remember, if you have missed episode 11, you've got to go to YouTube to see it. Thank you.